जय श्री माता जी आप सबका स्वागत है आज के इस सामूहिक ध्यान में श्री माता जी को प्रणाम करेंगे और सामूहिकता में कुंडलिनी चढ़ाकर बंधन लेंगे तीन महामंत्रा श्री गणेश मंत्रा
चित्त केंद्रित करेंगे अपने सहस्त्रार पर परम पूज्य श्री माता जी कृपावंत तो होकर हमें निर्विचार अवस्था प्रदान कीजिए श्री माता जी कृपावंत तो होकर हमें निर्विचार अवस्था में स्थिर कीजिए इसी अवस्था में स्थिर होकर हम श्री माता जी के अमृत वाणी को ग्रहण करेंगे टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू वर्शिप श्री कृष्णा एज वेरी ग्रेट पर्सनालिटी एंड you know why he came on this earth to establish this is the new form of not virat not virata but a form by which this country became so prosperous and by his advent only he created a beautiful mentality among the people how to <coughs> develop this country with dharma and he had very great leaders who followed him and who worshiped him in a way and created a new world of this america but unfortunately as the time passed on his form vanished from the minds of the people the reason was Krishna was represented here by a very very wrong type of people who had no idea about Shri Krishna that he was a great master of wealth that he knew how to use the wealth 
and how to create the wealth with dharma, not with other. They all forgot about it completely and gradually started using maneuvering powers, all kinds of all kinds of adharmic things, cheating, grabbing money, spending their money in absolutely useless things. He is Kubera. He doesn't need any money, of course. He achieves money. And not only that, he is live, he lived in money. They said that he created a golden house for him, absolutely made with gold in Dwarika. But it's submerged in the water, in the sea. And nobody believed that it is true. But now they have found out his house under the water, very deep waters. So, all their conjecture about him was wrong, all false. That he was definitely a man who made lots of money by dharma. Also, he was a son of a king and he built this Dwarika out of gold. It is still there and people have found it, but under the sea. Thousands of years have passed, but still existed. Only because perhaps we belong to Shri Krishna, it is still existing. That's what it is. Because he was the one who was for Satya, for Truth. He was for Truth. And he worked out everything on the principle of Truth. Whatever was not Truth, he tried to finish it up. Whatever was destructive, he tried to remove that. And he established himself through truth, truthful. He is the one who represents the truth, absolute truth, and how the truth can prevail in everything. I'm just the opposite of him because I don't understand money at all. But he's looking after that part in my life. I'm so hopelessly bad. I don't understand banking. I don't understand money. I can't even count money. Now, what can you say to that? But he's there to look after. And I have no, never a dearth of money, never a dearth of any wealth. It's all full of it. Also, it comes through your sense of satisfaction. If you have that sense of satisfaction, you don't look for money. What happened in your country that some people got money? If you got little money, then you get the taste of money. They are not satisfied people. So like mad, they went on spending on nonsensical things. It is something very much human. After hu human evolution, after you have reached a certain state of enlightenment, then all these demeaning things like greed, all disappear from your character. You don't have that greed in you anymore and you become extremely a satisfied person. To you, money is there, all right, but it's not so important. It is just that you think 
don't need it. And you get it. All done by Sri Krishna all over. Can you imagine? He is doing all this looking after you and helping you with money. We started Sahaja Yoga without a single fine. I don't, never had any problem. <coughs> so, one thing, as Kubera, he is the supplier of money. He looks after people who don't have money. He gives money to people who stand by truth, who enjoy the life of truth. It is his work that people enjoy wealth, otherwise they don't. They have this much, they want to have more, that means they don't enjoy the wealth. They have a little, they want to get much more. Why? Because they are not enjoying whatever they have. But after Self-Realization, you will see that you enjoy whatever you have. You enjoy it fully, absolutely, and you don't hanker after something that is not there. Doesn't matter if you don't have. Many a times people have asked me, Mother, why not we have the puja of Krishna as Kubera? I said, no. Just now everybody is trying to become Kubera. Let them learn a lesson. And then we will have the puja of Kubera. And that's why today I have agreed to have this puja. Because now you have seen what happens if you have greed. You go on committing all kinds of sins, all kinds of wrong things, which can destroy your country. Such a rich country has now become a poor country. Where is that money gone? They are very clever. Somebody told me today that it's money with the insurance. My God, I said, the law is such that you can't get out that money. Secondly, they said that it is in offshore and all that. I said, but see now, they were never afraid that they'll be caught up. And they continued for so many years. But I'm sure one day they'll all be exposed by Kubera himself. So, today by worshipping Kubera, what we are doing, we are going to establish, establish the truth of money. What lies behind the money? What is the point of having money? This country had money. As a result, so many good people came here to work and you had so many complimentary things. You had lots of people who have complimented. Because I think in certain things, Americans were little less. Not in intelligence, but in brilliance, I think they were a little bit lacking. So they got very brilliant people from abroad. And also, they were very focused people, so they worked it out very well. Also, they respected people who came with brains. So, this is what happens when you forget that truth is the main point. If you don't have the truth, no use having money. Because what you did was to go around with this thing, that thing, I mean, all kinds of things, to just get money. The other day I was traveling through Las Vegas, last day. And when we stopped at that airport, so many people walked into the aeroplane. And they all were looking as if somebody is dead in their family, what has happened? First I couldn't understand. Then said, Mother, they have lost all their money.
So, when they have money, they are jumping. Next moment, they are crying because they have lost the money. What's the use of such a money, which is so temporary, which is so useless? But that is human nature to run after Maya. And this is the quality of money that it gives you Maya. Maya like this, that they get a little money somewhere. With that little money, they buy something. Then they think money is very important. So you can buy lots of things. You can buy cars, you can buy aeroplanes, this, that. So there is where Maya plays on you. And you start running after that mad money, which makes you mad. It's nice that at this juncture, they have discovered the falsehood of this Maya money. And I'm so happy that they were all handcuffed and all their power of money was finished. So, this Kubera is working out all these tricks. Krishna is a very tricky, extremely tricky personality. He puts the tricks every action after every action. Now, money matters, he first befools you, that you run after it. And then you just discover that it was stupidity. We have a story in our country called Sheikh Chili. He got little money and he got into the grab of this Maya. So he thought, I can do very well. So he started dreaming as to what he should do. So he went and bought lots of eggs. And he said, now these eggs will have little, little chicks, which will grow, which will I'll sell, and I'll so much money, like that he was talking. And while thinking about it in his mind, went off to sleep. And then in his sleep, he fell on the eggs, and all the eggs broke. So the Maya was over. This should happen early, but if it doesn't happen, then you end up in the jail or something like that. Sahaja Yoga is one thing which gives you a complete vision, complete vision of the destruction that can follow this Maya business. It is something, such an insight that you don't have to do anything with it. I'm different, I told you, I don't understand it at all. But even if you understand the value of money, even if you understand that money can bring lots of things to you, despite that, you don't look at it, just turn your face. That is the sign of a real Sahaja Yogi. To him, it doesn't matter, temperamentally. It's not that he does something for that or tells his mind, nothing. Temperamentally, he doesn't care for money, just because he's above it. The one who is above money is a real searcher. The one who is engulfed in the nonsense and the maya of money is not a searcher. Of course, I've seen most of the searchers are extremely honest, especially in the West. But in India, there's a disease as you have some here viruses. We have certain viruses in India also. So they still go on running after money. To them, money is important. But in the evolutionary process, if you reach a certain state where you rise above your Nabi chakra, rise your Nabi chakra, then money is not so important. It's not so important. To me, I find I, I cannot buy things unnecessary. Of course, I mean, there are so many unnecessary things gathered. 
because you people give me these presents, these, that. But myself, you'll be amazed. I'm so nervous, or I should say hesitant, or you may call it absolutely absent from the spot where they are doing any business, any purchasing. Come here and fix it, please. It falls down, so I'm holding on. Correct? Now. Now, all right. In the same way, Sahaja Yogis have to fix their mind. <laughs> to their spirit and enjoy the powers of your spirit, your own. That enjoyment, once you get it, you don't fall to your greed. This is something very, very simple, but sometimes you don't do it. You get enamored by something, maybe a car, maybe a rupee, I don't know what, whatever it is. It's a headache to have too many cars, isn't it? <laughs> but people have. They think by that people are impressed and they think no end of themselves or not. Nothing. If they are impressed, what is the use to us? What do we get out of it? Sahaja has his own spirit to enjoy more than anything else. He doesn't want to possess anything. It's a headache to possess things also. The other side of it is a Mahalakshmi. If that principle is within you, Mahalakshmi principle, you will have never a problem of money, on the contrary, you will know how to stop it. So far, as I am concerned, I get fed up of my Mahalakshmi principle. Because I don't know from where it works out, how it works out. Without any effort. But the temperamentally, I have no interest at all. Temperamentally. But it is the, I don't know what is the cause of this effect. Now, supposing I buy some small thing, just like that, it will sell at least ten times more. It will be of value at least ten times more. I don't know how. It's very surprising. Uh, automatically, I'll buy something very small and I f find it's very expensive. How it works, that must be miracles of Mahalakshmi, I think. So, what I have to tell you is this that you should not worry about your financial situations at all. Do not go on calculating, do not see how much money you have in the bank, what you have to do with your money, where you should invest. I have seen people going mad planning the whole thing. There is no need to do that once you are a surgeon. It all works automatically. The greed is within you, just like any other disease. As you have diseases, greed is also there. As your diseases can get cured with Sahaja Yoga, your diseases, as much as your greed is, it vanishes. If you don't know what is greed is, the only way to counterbalance is to become extremely generous. If you are extremely generous, greed will run away. That may be another way of doing it. Supposing you 
get something uh, in your house and you think it is too much not to get rid of it but just to think it's too much you should give it to someone you just start thinking whom can you and immediately you will remember oh that person doesn't have this let me give him this and if you give him he'll be so thankful so thankful and he'll say all kinds of nice things to you which normally nobody would say to you nobody and it's surprising how joy giving it is how people like your generosity so you have to be generous just generous not with yourself but with others as much as possible be generous generosity is very love giving one of the expressions of your love many a times it has happened with me that i saw somebody needed something i kept it in my mind and i bought that thing and gave it to that person and the amount of love that person gave me was thousand time more than what i would have got joy out of buying it by that thing it was so insipid for me but for him it was he told so many people mother gave me this mother gave me her surprise then they asked me mother how did you give him i said just out of love many people took to sahaj yoga <coughs> thinking what a generosity is so to be generous is the best way to live in this world. after all it's a headache to have too many things better to get rid of them but out of love if you do that <coughs> you will be know how much they will be appreciative of you another thing is <coughs> to get rid of get rid of greed you should try to do some sort of a collective social work supposing you go to some place where lots of poor people are there i tell you your greed will just drop you are amazed how these people are living in what conditions why do i care for all the wealth and everything that will be just shocking sometimes you see you see people in india also in a very bad condition once i went to calcutta and i was so somehow or other you see by chance i happened to be in places where people were very in a very very great poverty even the children and you'll be amazed for days together i would eat my food i was crying and not eating my food i just didn't know how to do because i felt what is this why these people are so poor and i was helpless so i was crying that one day i should try to do something for them it is really remarkable at a very young age of mine i started a labor home i started a infirmary refugee home all kinds of things <clears throat> and i never even thought that whatever money i have if i give to these people i may have to give up some things i also sold some of my things because so pleasure giving i tell you so pleasure giving so joy giving to be generous 
It is so pain in every way that you should be generous. That is the quality of Kubera. He is an extremely generous personality. And that's what personality you should be. So I've seen that Sahaja Yogis are very generous. So far nobody has told me that somebody is a miserly fellow. So far, so far. But I'm sure one day will come when we'll have people of very high quality. In Sahaja Yoga we don't say, like other cults say, that you give up your clothes, you give up your family, you stay stay in a forest or in a hut or in nothing of that. Don't give up anything. You have to give up from your heart. Just it should happen in your personality. Don't have to give up. And if you have that well built in spirituality, you will not even think of grabbing someone. On the contrary, you would like to give up everything. My father was even worse than me, I should say. He always used to leave the house open, all doors open. He said, no thief will come if you keep the doors closed. So one day a thief came and he took away his gramophone. In the old times, these big horn ones, he took away. The next day my father was sitting very sad. So my mother asked her, why are you sad because of the gramophone? No, I'm only sad because it seems he's a conizer of music, he has taken the gramophone, but no records. <laughs> so my mother said, all right, what should we do? Should we advertise in the newspaper that you take away your records? I mean, it's such a beauty that even after so many years, I'm telling you and you are enjoying. What a beautiful character it was of generosity. But if you force it through religion, through any such ideas that you give up that, you give up, don't have to give up. You give up from within. If you are not attached to it, you have given up. That should be there. And if you all enjoy your generosity and charity, nothing like it. <coughs> I've known people who are very rich and all that. But they lack generosity. That is another quality of Kubera. He perhaps understand banking, perhaps. That time there were no banks, but I think must be because the way he manages banks, you know, it seems to me that he's sitting on top of them. And that's why still in the banks there is no problem. I don't know. But <coughs> he's a very clever person, very intelligent, very alert which is important if you have to deal with money. Though he was absolutely detached from money, and just see his life, what he did. He lived in childhood with his guru, and he used to take, what you call, <coughs> the cows and herds outside, in the jungles. That is how he lived in his childhood. And later on, he was playing with the 
boys who were looking after the cows in a very, I mean, ordinary family. He never hankered after money. He used to steal, <coughs> used to steal the butter. Because these ladies used to sell these to Kansas military people. So he used to eat that, so that this lady should not give it to them. Just imagine, such a little boy like him. So actually, how he was teaching them a lesson. Those ladies were greedy, wanted to give that to these horrible soldiers, and he would eat all that butter himself. In everything that he did, what you see is extreme generosity, extreme generosity. With all his intelligence, his, he was so good. And he <coughs> killed his own uncle, I should say. For him it was not important. So-called relations were not important. But what you see in our India especially, that relations are very important. The father is a thief, his son is a thief, his grandson is a thief, all of them are thieves. Can you imagine? I haven't seen in a family, if there's one person who is a thief, anyone is progeny or honest. It's a very funny thing. But such greed crawls into their minds that they don't think it's important. They just think that stealing is the only way one can live. Though in India there are people who are extremely honest. I have seen our servants, they never steal it, nothing, never. I don't know, they have no reasoning for it. It's a matter of fact. They never steal anything. Very surprising. Why? Why don't they steal? They are happy with their lives. They don't want to change it. They don't want to have these horrible things that can put them in jail. But they don't know. They don't even think about it. Just They just don't do it. Why? Because they have a sense of shame. In the poorer people's sense of shame is very, very developed. In that society, they have a great respect for people who are honest. And they are all honest. One of them may be not, but they have no respect for such a person. Because they think Self-respect is the biggest thing. Can you imagine these poor people? They have food once a day, but to them their self-respect is above everything. So the third solution for this kind of a nonsensical greed is your self-respect. Why should you steal? Why should you have anything that is stolen? Or why should you have anything that belongs to another person? If you have that self-respect within you, you won't touch anything that is not yours. When the servants can do that, why not people who are not that badly off? It is a temperament of a higher level, I think, 
which they develop, where there is self-respect is much more important than all kinds of other things that may satisfy their greed. One thing about greed is it is never satisfied. It is never satisfied. I have seen people who were very rich once upon a time, became very, very poor. So to them life has become hell. They can't live with, without their great, I should say, pomp and show. But they don't understand that it was false. They just go on feeling extremely downtrodden when they lose their money. Then there are people who want to have money. They'll do anything but get money. It's a very funny thing, but also power is the same as that. If you have your own powers, don't hanker after these powers. But they want to have power because they want to have money. And they get power with money. Can you imagine? Where are human beings? At what level? At what level of evolution they are? They are going <laughs> round and round the circle of this money. This is Nabi Chakra, which has to improve, which gives you satisfaction. If your Nabi Chakra is satisfied, you have achieved the state of Kubera. That's very important to see that your Nabi should be satisfied. There are so many other kinds of things we have. But I think now the first is this greed. And this, if it is managed somehow, brought to its own level, then I think the world will improve very much. May God bless you. इसी अवस्था में हम निशब्द ध्यान में बैठेंगे परम पूज्य श्री माता जी आपकी परम कृपा में अपने निस्वार्थ भाव से अपने विवेक से हम इस विश्व की सारी समस्याओं को समझे और उन समस्याओं का निराकरण हम पूरी तरह करें परम पूज्य श्री माता जी 
आपकी परम कृपा में हम कभी भी किसी अशुभ और अधार्मिक संस्कृति का अधार्मिक विचारों का और अधार्मिक लोगों का स्वीकार ना करें परम भोज श्री माता जी आज का यह सामूहिक ध्यान हम आपके श्री चरणों पर समर्पित करते हैं कृपावंत तो होकर हम सबको और इस संपूर्ण विश्व को आशीर्वादित कीजिए श्री माता जी को प्रणाम करेंगे और सामूहिकता में कुंडलिनी चढ़ाकर बंधन लेंगे आज का यह ध्यान सत्र यही संपन्न हुआ जय श्री माता जी